Hello, I'm Frost, and welcome to my weekly war update for EVE Online between the forces of the Imperium and Papi. Uh, we are now into our fifth week of the conflict in Delve, and I'm going to get you up to speed on all the things that happened, as well as kind of some personal opinions of where this war is going. Welcome back. So as I mentioned in the intro, we're now into our fifth week, and uh, we're starting to see a pattern of behavior. Things are starting to stabilize. So a lot of the events that happened this week were very similar to last week, except for a few notable changes. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how things play out. Probably in the next two to three weeks, we're going to see potentially one side getting an advantage or not. So it's kind of reaching, I believe, that crunch point now, especially as we're coming up to the run up to Thanksgiving and then Christmas, both of these times when there's high activity of EVE players. So it's going to be really interesting to see where this turns out. So. First job, as always, go into my box. There we go. And we've got our favorite map, Dotlan, up. Thank you, Walari, for our Dotlan. Uh, I have the calendar up here as well. So we're covering basically the week from the 9th of November uh, through to first thing Monday morning on the 16th. Now, first things first, iHub. So as you know, if you've watched the previous videos, iHubs are kind of the key to any kind of invasion in a region. and. Uh, iHubs have been flipping backwards and forwards as always um, and especially, especially down in the southeast region. So let me bring up my constellation again. Uh, here we go. Constellation name. So that's the light purple one in the bottom right hand corner and then the beige ones at the bottom and then this blue constellation right in the middle. And then finally the one that's kind of been most fought over is this constellation right in the middle here, the yellow one, which is B4H-9W. Now, this is in a route between 1DQ, uh, which is over here, which is in the pink, and that is kind of the subcap staging uh, for the Imperium, and E3O up here in the north, which is the capital staging system. And as I mentioned last week, uh, there's a big gate camp now on E301 or E3OI uh, versus RF in order to try and keep this whole top left hand pocket. That's these three constellations of the dark, sort of dark blue, purple, and the two greens, and this yellow one, all uh, tucked away with Sino jammers so that industry may continue. And we'll come back to this a little bit later in the video, but that was just kind of to give you up to date. Now, the main thing with the iHubs that has changed in the last week is if I go to my vulnerability timers, there we go. Previously, the iHubs were in the US time zone. So they normally kicked off about midnight uh, UTC, you know, which is kind of early, early evening East Coast time. So, um, so it was kind of in prime time for US. Now, those iHub timers have now changed. So if you actually look, uh, you'll see they're now in the U time zone. So if we go down to this bottom left hand corner here, you can see that if I click on one, it says it starts now at 1725. Uh, through to 2034. So this is UTC, uh, which is kind of one hour behind Central European or exactly on British time. So you can see it falls right bang in the EU time zone. So these have been switched and it's possibly, you know, because yeah, it, it is a burnout doing sub warfare all the time. And maybe the idea is, is to switch it over to, uh, to a different group within Imperium so that they're not all fighting the same kind of fights all the time. Now, that is great in concept, but the downside to this is ADMs. Now, ADMs uh, are what set the vulnerable time, vulnerability timer. So uh, things like mining, uh, ratting, and industry, all, they all take place in the system, and time goes by as well, with holding the, uh, the iHub and the TCU. All of these things go towards pushing up your ADM. The, the higher ADM, which can go all the way up to six, um, then that's if it's a capital system, but it basically it can go up to five, as I recall. Uh, the higher the number, the smaller the window. So as you saw there, if I go back to 1DQ, we have a three hour and nine minute window. Now, if we actually look at the, uh, the, vulner the vulnerabilities, uh, hang on, let me bring it up. It's under, <laughs> mind blank, actually, there we go, ADM, sorry. Okay, right, so here we go. So you can see that over in the, the east side, the southeast, all of these ADMs have dropped significantly. So, you know, they're down to 1, 1 1.6. There's still a few holding out here at 3.7, 2.7, 3.5. Um, but all of these down in the southeast are now dropped. And also all along this pipe where the iHubs have been fought over. 
There's so much conflict there that nobody wants to go out ratting, no one wants to go out mining. Whilst in the top left hand corner, the north northwest, you can see the ADMs are all pretty high. And they're going to be pushing these up higher and higher by trying to put as much industry and ratting in here as possible to try and secure these IHUBs. Because if one of these goes down, it's going to cause some problems. We'll come back to this left hand, top left hand corner later. And same down here in the, the, the left hand side. So you can see 1DQ's got an ADM of 5.7 being a capital system. And then same with the E3O is a capital system set at 6. So um, both of these are kind of like super strong, but others are starting to go down. Now, one of the ways of doing this is to actually hit structures. And we'll come, and once again, I'll come back to them in a minute because what I want to show you is the difference with an ADM of one. So if we look at here at, um, let's say QX, uh, and we'll click on that, you can now see the vulnerability timer goes all the way from 10 o'clock in the morning, all the way to four o'clock in the morning. It's an 18 hour window. So it's very different from the three hours we saw earlier. So that means that this infrastructure hub can be hit at absolutely any time. Uh, and so having these weak ADMs makes it much, much easier for the attacker to choose the time at which they're going to attack. Uh, and then it will, so the time at which these poppers comes out may be not very good for the Imperium. In fact, this doesn't work well for the Imperium at all because uh, within the Papi forces, you have fraternity, which is primarily a Chinese alliance, and you have fire, which is primarily a Russian alliance. And those guys have got like 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. covered. You know, it's their strongest time zone. So, um, you know, there, there's kind of potentially there's some issues there that, that you should, that need to be aware of. So by moving the timers into EU time zone, if their ADMs go down, it also moves the timer into the Russian stroke Chinese time zone, which is then much, much harder to defend. So we're going to have to see how that plays out. We're going to have to see how long those timers stay in that kind of region or whether they flip back to the US. So uh, that kind of covers the, the iHubs and I've covered the ADMs. Just keep checking my notes here. Right, so once again, we're just also going to look at the, the timer board. So this is the timer board for Delve. So as you can see, things are still getting hit. Uh, the, the, the ones in the, that uh, violet constellation in the southeast, that's like KTAC 6 and uh, PUIG, they're, they're constantly getting flipped backwards and forwards. Uh, but we're now seeing some TCUs getting hit as well. So it looks like, um, you know, now it's got to the point in this, uh, sorry, in this region down in the bottom right hand corner. So let me just go back to my constellation again. Uh, this like purple one down here. That um, they want, no, I'll put it to security. Let's go to sovereign, uh, to iHubs. There we go. So this bottom uh, one here is that now uh, it looks like Pappy wants to say, no, we, we own this. Uh, and this is very, very clear by what Pappy are now doing, which is they're hitting a lot of structures. And if you remember last week, they hit a couple of Satios. Well, they did the same this week. And if we actually look at our Satios, you can see that uh, a couple more went down. Uh, so last week we had one go down in Delve in PUIG. PUIG is right here in this constellation. And now uh, the others that have gone down, have come back, are in FTAC-T and JTAC-L. Going back, so JTAC-L is right there, FTAC-T is right here. So this whole area has been cleared out of all major structures. Now, generally, as I said, you know, structures aren't that key from a strategic point of view, but what they do do is that they lower morale, you know, especially for the, uh, the corporations that own these, uh, these CTOs, you know, they're expensive things to lose, uh, but also they still give a reason for people to be here. So, you know, they are, you know, it's like, I still want to live in this area because I've got my structure here and I've got my jobs here and I've got my industry here. You remove those structures and these become dead zones, they become wastelands, you know, there's no reason for any more to live there and so there's no reason to fight over them. And, uh, and so you, what you're seeing now is that eventually these are not going to be flipped back anymore and it's eventually going to be taken over, but simply by taking out these structures. Now, so TOs are the, are the primary ones because obviously they're industry based. But also Fortizars matter as well, because Fortizars, uh, as I mentioned last week, they're force projection. They allow you to, you know, put ships in there, everything up to capitals, uh, and you can sort of deploy out. Now, if we look at Fortizar losses, uh, so in the last week, uh, we had one in Delve in JTACL, once again in that same area. Uh, we had one in QI6 as well in that area. So both of those Fortisars have been taken out. But there's two interesting Fortisars here uh, that I need to mention, which are actually in period basis. Uh, one in TCAG and one in MV. 
Now, the reason why these are important, I just show you on the map. So I essentially, 1DQ, as you know, is the staging system for Goon Swarm. <clears throat> then if we go down this, this pipe here and jump through into period basis, then TCAG is right here. There we go, right there. And what it was acting as was uh, a forward base in order to attack into test space. Because if we then jump into Paragon Soul, we then get into test space. If we then go along this little pipe along the top to RTAC A, just right here, it drops you right into the homeland of test. This is their ratting region. And uh, if you're not aware of it, you know, that uh, Imperium, especially Goonstorm, are very industry focused. So it kind of makes sense. And their activity has been a lot in, in this area, coming through period basis and going and attacking Esatoria. Because they have kind of an industry mindset, their view is if we stop them ratting, if we stop them mining, they're going to fall apart. And so, you know, because that, that's kind of very much how they live, you know, especially the last three, three, or three years or so, they've been in Delve and they've just been ratting and mining. And so resources are king. And, and that's where all the members' focus is going to be. And I believe that's the thinking behind, uh, behind Goon Swarm in this particular case, and why they've been constantly been sending fleets down to Esoteria rather than fighting over kind of this, this home territory. You know, it's like hurt them the way they're hurting us. And so that's why, you know, this, these, two, these two Fortisars were clearly causing a problem for test, and so they decided to take them out. So that kind of brings us up to date with kind of what's happening with the iHubs and with structures being hit. Now, talking of structures, then we come on to uh, Wednesday the 11th. Let me bring up my calendar again. So there we go, we're midweek, Wednesday the 11th, and the morning of Thursday 12th. Once again, these are all in UTC time zones. So, what happened on Wednesday? Well, uh, Pandemic Horde uh, went out on a, on a roam, because that's what, you know, Horde and Brave, they, they do that, that's their, that's their content. They're like just going out on roams, finding stuff to shoot, no matter what it is. Uh, and they went out and uh, headed off towards, uh, let me bring back my Delve map. They headed off down, down this pipe and went down towards Fountain to YTAC2 Anno. And they came into Fountain right here in this one system right on the edge of Delve. And they managed to kill four Rorquals. Uh, these uh, four Rorquals were moon mining. Uh, three of them looked like they belonged to the same account, being called, being called Dorkin, Mikan, and Tuckin. I would assume they're on the same account. And then there was one extra one here called Pachadum Dun. Now, obviously, you know, they had a bit of whaling, that was great. Then they were heading home and they got to this uh, system. I think it was JP4 right here. Uh, in fact, I can click on it right here, probably. There we go. Uh, and it should bring up, there we go. It was in, uh, sorry, KWE. So it was, uh, it was, there we go, KWE, so right here. So it was on their pipe on the way back home. And they spotted a Ragnarok, a Titan, just sitting on a structure and, um, they decided to bump it off, and apparently it was AFK. So, as well as kind of getting all of these uh, these four Rockwell kills, uh, they basically just went off, and uh, everyone just brought some bombers after that and killed a Ragnarok. And it wasn't even contested. It looks like though the player was completely AFK. No one came to help it. It just died. So that kind of like you know pushed up Horde and, and got their morale up and everything. It was kind of an easy kill for them. But then, what came around was Thursday morning was the Keepstar in Quirius. So the Keepstar in 49 Tap U. So I mentioned this last week. I mentioned the weeks before how the iHub uh, had been in place for five weeks, which meant that um, Pappy could put in a Sinojammer and I was surprised that they hadn't contested that at all. Uh, the, the Keepstar was then reinforced last week and then its timer came out in the early, early hours of Thursday morning. And as predicted, it died uncontested. So you can see on the right here, this is Goon Swarm. So you've got the keep star at the top for a value of 218 billion, 217 billion. And there was literally just a couple of stilettos and an industrial ship that maybe wasn't aware that, that the keep star was dying at that point. And that was it. Uh, and what you're seeing now is, a, is kind of the first step towards Pappy being much more brazen. And if we look at the left, uh, you get an idea of the kind of Pappy forces that are available. And why this war hasn't escalated yet, because everything we're seeing so far is all happening on a SAPCAT basis. But here, this is just US time zone, and this is just for a Keepstar kill. It's not a full-on fight. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down through the Titans now. <clears throat> Excuse me. There we go, so we're scrolling down. So that's just all the avatars. There we go. And then we go on to all the Leviathans. <clears throat> and then we're going on to the Rags. 
and we keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. A lot of racks. <laughs> uh, and then the aerobuses. There we go, we keep going. And then finally now we're getting on to uh, supers. So we've got the, the Aeons, uh, we've got some Wyverns, we've got some Hells, and then we should have a big chunk of Nixes. There we go. And then lots and lots and lots and lots of Nixes. So these were basically all deployed to get on the Keepstar kill. Now, this looks impressive, but uh, the Imperium have an equivalent, if not more. And it will reach a point where both of these will go head to head. And this is what is driving everybody to want to be part of this war, because it's going to reach a point where all this stuff is deployed and everything's thrown at everything else. But for now, you know, this kill board gives you an idea of kind of the levels this war can scale up to. And nothing has been ever on this kind of level before in terms of the forces that are going to potentially go head to head. So that kind of makes it very, very interesting. But as, as I said, Keepstar was going to die, it had no strategic value, and it went boom, boom, out of the way. So now Quirius is completely out of the picture. In fact, if we actually look at Quirius, you can see the iHubs that are left empty now. Uh, we've got TCUs as well that are just left empty. No one's really contesting over them. No one's using the space for now. It is kind of just dead space. Right, so that was kind of what happened on a Thursday. Then on Friday, uh, something happened which did affect Pappy um, and was kind of a boon uh, to Goonswarm that came in or it came to their advantage by accident more than anything else. And that is, uh, there is an alliance um, called Requiem Eternal. And Requiem Eternal lived in Impasse and in Tenerifis. They lived in Impasse down here, just south of uh, Catch, uh, and in Tenerifis. And they were part of legacy coalitions. They were part of Tappy. So that's Tess, Brave, etc. Uh, and um, they uh, basically got shut down overnight. So you can see that they were closed on uh, 13th of the 11th, 2020. So that was on Friday at 11.29. Suddenly all of their regions, they owned over 50 regions, uh, were lost. And the reason why is a director flipped. A director who held the, the, the keys to all of this uh, was unhappy with the rest of the directors within Rookery and Eternal, had a grudge and went over to Goonswarm and flipped it. And so um, all of these systems were lost. Uh, this means that all the jump bridges in Impasse and some of Tenerifis were affected. Uh, all ADMs obviously just you know, are being affected by this as well. Uh, and Test and Brave had to rush in really, really quickly and drop loads of TCUs to, to secure the SOV and iHubs to secure the SOV as quickly as possible. Uh, I believe a Fortisar as well now has a little B above it uh, in either an impasse or Tenerifis. And um, yeah, if we go back to um, the overview, uh, you can see that there was an alliance of over 2,000 mem members, so pretty sizable, size, size, I'd say. So uh, yeah, that, that happened. And uh, these things happen in the middle of the war, and this is why sometimes things are very, very unexpected. Now, as for the corporations, um, you know, there was like 33 corporations in Requiem Eternal. Uh, I believe they're now trying to create a new alliance called the uh, Eternal Requiem, and they're trying to reform. Uh, so we will see how that how that all plays out. But uh, yeah, one of those things that just came out of the blue, just like that. By the way, if you enjoy my content, then uh, do, do please hit the bell icon, uh, subscribe, uh, all that kind of usual stuff. Give me a like. You know how it all works with YouTube. And uh, I will mention as well that you know I am on Discord. I have my own Discord, it's linked in the description below. If you ever want to come and talk about any of this stuff, then uh, you know I have a channel specifically on my Discord, free online. Uh, yeah, come along, join in, and uh, yeah, have your point of view as well. And I'm always here to hear you know the goss and info that's floating around. As you'll notice from my videos, uh, I try and rely purely on fact. I don't do hearsay, and if there's any kind of hearsay or hint of hearsay, then I will use allegedly. Uh, because, um, you know, I like to just stick to the facts. I think those are the important things and plenty of other people do the spin. Right, so now we're kind of going to go, go on to uh, my kind of thoughts on, on where things are going. And uh, my main concern really is that, you know, the, the Imperium uh, have put themselves into these top three constellations. Uh, let me bring up my constellations here. So the two green ones and that kind of light sort of purpley one and this yellow one in the top left-hand corner and have kind of boxed themselves in and they've sieged down. And to me, it seems rather early, uh, but then I think it's got a lot to do with mindset. And I, and I said before, you know, how um, the Imperium wanted to go down to Essatoria and attack Test and attack their miners and stuff. And they seem to, you know, to, their line members are very industry focused 
And so the thing that affects morale for uh, the Imperium more than anything, or Goonsaw in particular, should I say, is because uh, sorry, the initiative are much more kind of warlike, uh, is that the moment they're kind of ratting and stuff, then that's fine. You know, that for them, good fights and winning fights isn't the thing that boosts morale. It's being able to keep that revenue stream going and, and keep that sort of ratting mining thing going. And so that's why they seem to have sieged themselves in very, very early. And as a consequence of that, though, you know, I'm seeing more and more structures go down. And I think, you know, it's giving more of a pappy of a push to try and clear more iHubs. Now, at the moment, you know, they're, they're, I, um, Pappy are very fixated on this one constellation. And, you know, they're going to try and secure this. I mean, even just last night, they, uh, I believe, yeah, last night, they, uh, which is uh, Sunday the, let me bring up my, uh, Sunday the 15th, uh, they, uh, they reinforced another iHub in AJI. So that is the point of focus. I'm still surprised they haven't really gone into uh, this constellation down here in Quirius in the south yet. Uh, I would imagine that will happen after this one. Uh, although this gray one right here, you know, is, is, is of importance as well. I mean, the thing to understand though, is even though the subcaps are in 1DQ and the, uh, the capitals are in E3O, uh, this, this pipe down here is not an issue for them in terms of getting ships through uh, because jump bridges are very, very easy between this pink constellation in the bottom left-hand corner and all of these constellations in the north. Even though they're not actually directly linked, uh, they're less than five years, five light years apart. In fact, I think somewhere I had, there we go, I've got a jump route. So you can see that a jump bridge from 1DQ to E3O is only three light years. And all of these areas up here in the top left-hand corner, uh, those are all those uh, constellations or systems that you saw in that top left-hand side of the pocket. And so they're well within reach of 1DQ. And so therefore they can put jump bridges, the moment they can keep their eye hubs up uh, in this pink constellation down here, then they can keep um, and they can keep their cyanogermas going in the top section up here. Then they can put jump bridges to it, from any one of these pink systems to any one of these systems up the top, any one of these constellations, and be able to get ships backwards and forwards. So eventually, when one DQ will be on, will have problems is when, if and when, should we say, uh, these uh, these I hubs in in this pink constellation of eight WA tech. So not um, yeah of zero tech E1 MK or EI MK go down. Once these are down, then 1DQ is in trouble. And then I would imagine that that's when we will see these supers come out to take on 1DQ, but we're not there yet. And I would say this is probably gonna come around Christmas time. You know, it's gonna, it's, as you see, we've been at this four weeks now, you know, and they've, they've secured kind of like three constellations. Uh, that's Pappy, and they're kind of working on their fourth one and fifth one, which is the light blue one in the middle. Uh, you know, they're, they're still got a long way to go. So, and it's going to get tougher as they get closer to this this pink constellation of Otak EY. EI. So yeah, we're going to see how that goes. But the thing is, is that what I have seen though, is that, um, and I've got some footage here to show you, that um, Pappy are becoming more brazen. You know, they, they, they feel much more like this territory is, Delve is becoming their own. Uh, the fact that they're bringing out Titans, I mean, before Fraternity brought out Titans, but as I said last week, Fraternity brought Titans to everything. Uh, now, uh, different um, uh, alliances are actually putting um, Titans on Satyr kills. You know, they're just undocking them, bringing them out. But not only this, they're, they're, they're gating them, right? They're, they're, they're just, they're in hostile territory and they're flying dozens of Titans through gates in hostile territory. And what I find really, really surprising about this is that um, I'm not seeing the guerrilla tactics that really should be used at this stage. Um, you know, from the top, from the point of view of the Titans, you know, there should be dictators locked out in every system. They know what timers are gonna be hit. They know what IHUBs are gonna be hit. They know what structures are gonna be hit. You know, we're in final timers. I'm surprised there's not dictators, that sabers, you know, in every single system. You know, bubbling up these gates, you know, making it super hard, getting these titans caught on these gates now, you know, they're, they're you know, just going through, you know, bringing in bombers, you know, making it so that things aren't a walk in the park. And, and I think that's the thing right now. Same with, you know, these Eagle fleets and Ferox fleets from, from Tappy, you know, they're attacking these structures and they're never ever contested. You know, there, there's a little bit of contesting going on uh, in this area here, but you know, they, they should be, 
literally waterboarded on every single gate. Now they should be bubbled on every single gate. Every single gate jumping through should be a nightmare. Make it hard work, you know, because at the moment it's, you know, with this kind of situation where you have subcats just coming in and uh, just sitting around the structure, it just becomes a chat room. You know, everyone's just chatting in comms, you know, everyone's chilled and then jump through gates, they go home. So instead of chatting, chatting in their courtrooms, you know, they're chatting in fleet. You know, but if they're being waterboarded on every single gate, you know, and they're having to like constantly be aware and on their toes, you know, and the FC is kind of getting rattled because he's like having to constantly deal with bubbles, potentially bombers dropping in at any moment. It makes the fleets more stressed and that's what's going to affect morale more. And, and I'm surprised that that's not been happening yet, you know, and uh, I'm seeing a lot of Serbs and I'm seeing a lot of bombers, you know, from, from the Imperium. But, you know, they need to bring their elite people out, bring out, you know, the Lokis, you know, mostly the Feroxes. Feroxes die so easily to Lokis, especially if they're caught in bubbles. Uh, it's expensive, you know, it is expensive to, to get Lokis out and you need good pilots, but, you know, the Imperium's not small, you know, they have those pilots. And, I, and I'm surprised that the, there hasn't been that kind of harassment back. And, and I feel that, the, you know, the Imperium need to do this, otherwise they're kind of, they're going to, going to lose ground. They're going to end up getting boxed in this bottom left hand, top left hand corner. And then, you know, they're eventually going to run out of space. And I'm concerned about this. So I would love to hear your viewpoints on this. You know, let me think, let me hear your thoughts. You know, uh, I mean, I'm not saying it's, it's, a, it's a completely a pappy, pappy you know, success. Like I said, you know, we've got some big fights to come up yet. But uh, the, the ongoing war should still be happening and I'm not seeing it happening. So anyway, there you go. That's some of my thoughts. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, as I said at the in the middle of this, scene, of this, um, this video, please give me a like, please subscribe, please hit the bell icon for notifications and come into my Discord and chat with me. And I'll be happy to chat to, back to you. And uh, yeah, that wraps it up for me. Uh, until next week, uh, I think in the next couple of days, I've got a mid-month news update for Sci-Fi Gaming, so hopefully you'll watch that as well. And that's it from me, all right? Bye for now.